Light and matter both behave partially like particles and partially like waves. So what distinguishes light from matter? For example, matter can flow like a fluid or be rigid like a solid. How come we can build complex structures out of matter, but not out of light? The answer is that unlike matter, light has no mass and it does not interact with itself, inhibiting its ability to form objects. With the help of modern physics, though, we could get around this problem. In the lab, we can engineer photons to acquire mass and to interact. This makes it possible to create fluids and structures made of light. The energy of a free photon scales linearly with its momentum. However, we can trap the photon in one direction, so a standing wave forms between two tiny mirrors called a microcavity. In this case, the photon energy scales with the square of its momentum in the remaining two dimensions, like a massive particles would. Going back to the particle picture, if we add a layer of semiconductor inside the cavity, the photons can create electron-hole pairs called excitons. These interact with each other before decaying back into photons. This process forms massive, interacting, composite particles called polaritons, which flow just like fluids of matter do. That is, we can augment or dress photons in the lab such that they acquire structure. What's more, because polaritons are bosons, meaning that they can occupy the same quantum state as each other, under the right conditions, they will combine to form one large macroscopic state called a condensate. Condensates often exhibit superfluidity, where they flow with no viscosity. Additionally, superfluids cannot rotate, except in the form of tiny defects called vortices. Depending on how the photons are injected, it is possible to make polariton superfluids, as well as new types of fluids that have no viscosity but no vortices either. Vortices play an important role in the formation of two-dimensional condensates, where they spontaneously bind together in opposite spinning configurations as the condensate forms. Furthermore, they can annihilate one another, almost like two mini tornadoes disappearing into nothing. This process of vortex pair annihilation has its roots in the mathematics of topology. A property of an object is said to be topologically invariant if that property is left unchanged by continuous transformations. For instance, no matter how a coffee cup is transformed, the hole in its handle can't be removed. This makes it topologically equivalent to a torus. Just like the hole in a torus, a vortex can't be smoothly deformed away. It is a topological defect in the superfluid. However, the charge of a vortex can be either positive or negative, depending on its sense of rotation. Oppositely charged vortices can then come together and annihilate, which leaves the overall topological charge of the fluid unchanged. When particles in a fluid are restricted, they can form a solid lattice, much like water turning into ice. Similarly, we can trap polaritons in space and build solids of light. This can be done, for example, by cutting cylinders out of a microcavity to form micropillars, which trap polaritons in all directions, and putting many micropillars together to form a lattice. Polariton lattices can be used to build devices called quantum simulators. These are simpler quantum systems which can model the behavior of more complex systems, too difficult even for the most powerful supercomputers. Lattices of polariton micropillars have already been able to host non-trivial topological states, which in the future could be the key to building powerful quantum computers.